Hello, good day everyone. It's Dr. Scott Stoll, co-founder of the Plantrition Project. And today I'm here with my amazingly good friend, Brenda Davis. Brenda, welcome. It's so good to see you. Oh, it's so good to see you too, Scott. Thank you so much for inviting me. You are welcome. And for those of you watching, Brenda Davis is our luminary award winner this year at the 2022 PBNHC conference, September 16th through the 19th in Desert Springs, California. We wanted to recognize you, Brenda, because of your amazing work. You know, 12 books, 15 languages, more than a million copies, your incredible research, Marshall Islands, um, the godmother of a vegetarian, the Hall of Fame of vegetarian. I mean, just on and on. The work that you've done around the world has been amazing. And you are really one of the pioneers. Your life change goes all the way back to 1989, right? That's right. And I, I am just uh, so deeply honored by, by this award. And I, I feel that, um, you know, it, it, we, we do what we can over so many years and just keep plugging away. And as a team with so many brilliant minds in the plant-based world, we're making a real difference. And I'm so grateful to have been a part of it and uh, very excited about it all. Yeah, and we're so grateful for your amazing contribution. You know, one of the things I appreciate about you, Brenda, is that you um, have this uncanny ability to dive into the research and distill down like these really granular facts and share them with people in a um, like a, a very appetizing way. You know, it's, it's your presentations are beautiful with all these incredible facts and I'm not sure how you dug it out of the research, but I, I always get so much out of your presentations. Oh, thank you so much. I, I always feel when I'm doing a presentation, I, I like to think about the people that will be in the audience and the time they've given to be there and, and all of the challenges involved with that and I just want to connect with them in a way that uh, will matter for them and that will be of value and of use to them. And so I try to bring it to a level that I think will give people some pearls that can make a difference in how they select foods and in the way they eat and all of those things. So, and feel so very privileged um, to be able to do that. Yeah, thank you, Brenda. And you're going to be doing a presentation at our conference this year. Uh, maybe you could share just a little overview of that presentation. Oh, absolutely. So what I'm going to be talking about this year is a, a, probably about a third of my presentation will be about what we know about the differences in nutritional intake, nutritional status, and diet quality when we compare people consuming, you know, different dietary patterns, including you know, plant exclusive diets or plant predominant diets. And then the last two thirds of the presentation will focus in on many of the nutrients that are of some concern to people at various stages of the life cycle, right from birth through to our senior years. And we'll talk about things like protein, iron, zinc, calcium, vitamin B12, vitamin D, iodine, omega-3 fatty acids, sort of all of the big ones that, and I hope I could squeeze it all into an hour, but um, I'm, I really want to, to touch on some of the points that, that sometimes may be missed or that will just make that difference in ensuring that our nutritional needs are met. I always feel like when we're doing plant-based, we're, we're sort of on trial in the eyes of the world. And one of the things that's really important is to prove to people that plant-based diets can be and are nutritionally adequate at every stage of the life cycle. Because when people feel that they're not or are worried that they might not be, it's a, a, a big factor that would hold them back from making that transition. That's right. That's one of the questions that, you know, comes up oftentimes in conversations with other clinicians, you know, is a plant-based diet really sufficient and adequate? And, you know, we see that in, you know, online forums and even research where they, they will try to undermine plant-based diets because of the inadequacy of some of the nutrients. Absolutely. And I think as human beings, we're pretty smart. If there, you know, if you think about the decades that, 
you know, we've been fortifying foods or, or enriching foods it went for an omnivorous population. When vitamin D was low, we added it to milk. When iodine was low, we added it to salt. And it was no big deal. And there are some nutrients that we don't get a lot of from plants. For example, vitamin B12 is probably the key one. And so to me, it seems pretty simple. We can add it to, to the foods that plant-based eaters eat all the time, or we can take a supplement. It's not rocket science. And so, but we do really want to be clear that you can't ignore those nutrients, that we need to just figure it out and get on with it. Um, because what we know, of course, is as people shift towards a more fully plant-based diet, we, we tend to enhance our ability to live longer with less disease, but we also reduce our carbon footprint and we reduce the suffering of animals. And so there are so many reasons to be doing this. We just want to make sure we do it right. That's right. That's right. And the founding kind of principle here is that there is no perfect diet. And so we work from that place and then we can determine what the optimal diet is, but we're not, there is nothing that's perfect. Absolutely. <laughs> so maybe before we go, Brenda, would you share with us um, a couple of really exciting things that you've learned in the last year looking at the research? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at the research all the time and I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't learn something. <laughs> But um, at the, two of the things that really stand out, I'm actually working on a diabetes course right now. I've worked with ACLM on a diabetes course, and now I'm working with the Food Revolution Network on a diabetes course. And one of the things that really stands out for me when I'm looking at the research on type 2 diabetes is how critical lipotoxicity is as a driver of this disease. Many people recognize that type 2 diabetes is really a disease of insulin resistance. And some of the research that I've come across in the last year or slightly more than a year is about how when we are able to reduce fat storage in vital organs, so in the liver especially, but also in the pancreas, we can reverse insulin resistance and we can actually restore beta cell function to some degree as well. And so for those that aren't familiar with lipotoxicity, the human body has a, an amazing capacity to store excess fat in our adipose tissue. We store a little bit as intramyocellular lipid in our, in our uh, muscle cells, which we use if we're very active, but we can actually accumulate too much uh, intramyocellular lipids as well. But when we start to store, when we have so much excess and can't shuttle it all to the, to the adipose tissue fast enough, sometimes it ends up getting stored in vital organs and vital organs do not tolerate excess fat storage well at all. The pancreas really doesn't tolerate uh, excess uh, fat storage at all. Uh, the liver uh, just makes the body very insulin resistant. And so when, you know, when we live in this sort of society of, of chronic um, excess of hyper palatable foods, it's really easy to overconsume calories. And, and so, you know, what it takes to reverse insulin resistance is a, de a cal caloric deficit and an increase in physical activity. And when we do that, we can actually reduce that lipid storage or the lipotoxicity of the vital organs and enhance insulin sensitivity. And so for me, that's really exciting because there were so many years that we believed that once you had type 2 diabetes, you'd always have type 2 diabetes. And we now know that that's not true. And in the same vein, we now have the major diabetes organizations around the world with, with statements defining what 
um, diabetes reversal is, you know, so, so the parameters for not diabetes reversal, I should say diabetes remission, remission because, right. um, because when you have diabetes, you, you know, if you go back to your, I mean, you can go into remission, but if you go back to your former lifestyle, you will very quickly develop type two diabetes again. So we think of it more as remission and the process as reversal, but, uh, but definitely you can put, for many people can put type two diabetes into remission. And then the second area that I'm very excited about is some of the, the new studies we're seeing on plant-based diets in children, because for many decades, we've had pretty good research on lacto-ovo vegetarian diets for children. But the, the research for vegan children has been more limited. And um, this year, and uh, actually in, I think it was 2019 and 2021 probably, we saw two major studies out of Germany called the Vecchi studies. And one was on toddlers, uh, I think age one to three, and the other was on children age six to 18. And both studies had at least 400 children. I think one was 401 and one was 430, the toddler uh, study. And what they did was compare nutrient intake, nutritional status, and growth and development of children and adolescents. And the bottom line is that not only did the vegan children do well, there were essentially no differences in growth and um, slight differences in nutritional status, but all of the dietary groups did reasonably well. All of the dietary groups were short in calcium and vitamin D. Uh, the vegan children were a little lower than the other children in those two nutrients, but they also were higher in nutritional status and nutrient intake for many other nutrients. They had the highest fiber intakes, they had the lowest saturated fat intakes, they had the, you know, the highest intakes of, of many nutrients, including things like, um, uh, surprisingly, iron and zinc were <laughs> higher in the vegan children, which was a surprise to me because normally zinc is a little bit lower. But what was really interesting is the protein intake. And so protein intake, for the toddlers was uh, 2.7 grams per kilogram for omnivorous toddlers, 2.3 for lacto-ovo vegetarian toddlers, and 2.4 for vegan toddlers. And the RDA is 1.05. So they were all over double. And then for the, you know, for the older children, um, the different, you know, they were consuming smaller amounts per kilogram body weight, but it was still I think, um, you know, 1.37 or something for the omnivores, 1.14 for the lacto-ovo and 1.16 for the vegans. And, and the RDA is somewhere between 0.85 and 0.95 for those age groups. So uh, these were very reassuring studies and gave us a little bit more um, to help parents feel confident about doing, um, you know, a 100% a uh, plant-based uh, diet. And, and in almost all of the, the studies that we've looked at in the last couple of years, in terms of diet quality, the vegan diet always comes out on top, which means people are eating more fruits and vegetables, more whole grains, more legumes, more nuts and seeds than other people consuming other dietary patterns. And they're also consuming, you know, less saturated fat, less total fat, fewer of the dietary components that are associated with increased risk of disease. So, um, yeah, I think those are very encouraging. Yeah, very, very encouraging. Thank you, Brenda. And for all of you watching, if you want to learn more from Brenda, please join us at the PBNHC Conference, International Plant-Based Nutrition Healthcare Conference. This is um, going to be in Desert um, Springs in California, September 16th through the 19th. Uh, go to pbnhc.com for more information. Brenda, I can't wait to see you in person. Fellowship oh, around you. a great meal and catching up. It's going to be amazing to be back in person again. I am so looking forward to that. I think we all are after these couple of years of isolation. <laughs> we sure are. So yeah, please join us. Um, we can all share a great meal and, and some fellowship together. Brenda, thanks for your time today. And so thank you, Scott. Thank All you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.